Okay, in this video, I want to show you guys how to simplify rational expressions. Okay, and then we're also going to state the restrictions at the end, and I'll talk to you about what that means. So, <clears throat> let's take a look at a rational expression. This is an example of a rational expression. What I want you to notice is that we have basically a fraction, and at the top of the fraction, we've got a polynomial. In that case, we have a quadratic polynomial, and at the bottom of the fraction, we have another polynomial, and in this case, it's another quadratic polynomial, although you could have linear polynomials on the top or the bottom. In this case, we have quadratic for both. So we're going to learn to simplify this rational expression. Okay. Now, in order to simplify a rational expression, your first move is going to be to factor everything that you can in this rational expression. So notice that since we have a quadratic on the top and a quadratic on the bottom, we should be able to factor both of them. So let's start by factoring the top. So over here, we get a sum of negative 7, a product of negative 30, and so two numbers that multiply to give us negative 30 and add to give us negative 7 are negative 10 and 3. And for the bottom, we get a sum of 1, a product of negative 30. Two numbers that add to give us 1 and multiply to give us negative 30 are 6 and negative 5. So we are going to split the quadratic on the top and the quadratic on the bottom. So we get 6x squared minus 10x plus 3x minus 5 over 3x squared plus 6x minus 5x minus 10. Now we have to uh, common factor the first two terms and then the second two terms at the top and the bottom, right? We're using the method of factoring by decomposition here, of course, for both the top and the bottom. So common factoring from the top, we get 2x times 3x minus 5, that's from the first two terms. And from the second two terms, we're going to common factor plus 1, which is going to give us 3x minus 5. So we now have that common uh, binomial factor that we can, we're going to want to factor it after. For the bottom, we common factor 3x from the first two terms, which gives us x plus 2. And then we're going to common factor out negative 5 from the second two terms, which is going to leave us with x plus 2 as our second factor. And notice that that x plus 2 is our common binomial factor here. So co uh, factoring out the common binomial factor from the top and the bottom, we get 3x minus 5 times 2x plus 1 over x plus 2 times 3x minus 5. Now, you might notice that at the top and the bottom, we have 3x minus 5 on uh, both of them, right? Interesting, thi uh, interesting thing about having a factor of 3x minus 5 on the top and on the bottom means that they are, in fact, going to cancel each other out, okay? So we can cancel out the, f the entire 3x minus 5 factor from the top and the bottom. And, of course, that's going to leave us with 2x plus 1 over x plus 2. So this is the simplified version of the original radical expression we started with, 2x plus 1 over x plus 2. However, there is one little thing that we need to mention. I want you to notice that at the, uh, in the denominator of our uh, fraction here, x plus 2, we're only allowed to include certain values of x because... If we have certain other values of x, then we're going to be basically dividing by 0. So namely, we have to restrict x from being certain values. Specifically, we got to say that x is not allowed to be equal to negative 2. Because, of, co of course, if x is negative 2, then this entire expression, x plus 2, is going to be equal to 0, and therefore we would be dividing by 0. So we need to restrict x from being negative 2. However, there is one other thing. Before we canceled out that factor of 3x minus 5, we ran into the same issue, right? If x was certain values, we would have an issue that if 3x minus 5 was 0, then we would ha also have a problem. We would be dividing by 0. So we're going to figure out another restriction. We're going to restrict the x value from being another value. So we're going to see what value x is going to have to be to make that factor 3x minus 5 equal to 0, bringing the 5 over. And then dividing by 3, we get x is equal to 5 thirds. So in other words, not only are we restricting x from being negative 2, but we're going to have to restrict x from being 5 over 3. And you're going to have to restrict the, uh, the, uh, the x value from being anything which would make any of the factors, oops, pardon me, which would make any of the factors in your factored form over here in the denominator equal to 0. So in that case, basically that suggests that if x was negative 2 from the first factor, Right, or if x was 5 thirds from the second factor, right, then in either case our denominator would be equal to 0, so we would have a problem, right? we'd have restrictions. So x is also not allowed to be equal to 5 thirds, 
Okay? And that is our final answer. Now, the only other one the thing I want to mention to you guys is that these two values that we're not allowing x to be, negative 2 and 5 thirds, are called the restrictions. So certain questions are going to ask you to simplify and then state the restrictions. And that's what we mean. So stating the restrictions is basically just go back to your factored form and then decide what values in your denominator uh, are going to make it equal to 0. Okay, so that's simplifying rational expressions, guys. Um, you're going to need to know how to do this for tomorrow's lesson. We'll talk a little bit of, a bit more tomorrow about what's going on, all right? So uh, I hope that clears things up. Take care, guys.